Well, it's it's all been touching my heart a long, long time. From the time I was a young boy, my father told me not only what happened on August 6th and August 9th, 1945, but the context of this incredible devastation of so many children, women, and elders, very few military targets hit. So I'd like, if I may, to give some context to what happened on August 6th and August 9th, 1945. Yes, please do. Yes. Well, 1942, the first bombings took place on Tokyo by the Doodle Raid, 16 B-29s. And of course, at that time, we were engaged as well in Germany. But of course, Germany surrendered on May 8th, 1945. But right before that, on March 10th, 1945, the US sent 279 B-29 Super Fortress bombers that dropped 2,000 tons of incendiary bombs on Tokyo, covering 16 square miles on what they call paper cities. It's the most massive firestorm ever in history. During that time, and not only then, but then up to 100 cities of Japan had been firebombed. Cities as small as 60,000 people, killing estimates minimum 333,000, up to 900,000 relatives, leaving homeless 1 million Japanese. I mean, we're talking about, in fact, they said when these 279 B-29s dropped these 2,000 tons of incendiary bombs on Tokyo over 16 square miles at 500 feet. That's how defenseless our Japanese relatives were. 500 feet. They said that the red mist coming up and the stench of burning bodies was so intense, they had to put on their oxygen masks for not vomiting. So this began March 8th. 1945. And after that, of course, where the then up to 100 cities were firebombed in quote unquote, they call them paper cities. Now, this is the same thing, by the way, that happened in Hamburg, Germany, where they firebombed all these relatives. So, you know, the idea that somehow August 6th and August 9th were somehow the determining point is not the reality of it. There had already been hundreds of thousands of Japanese burned alive before those bombs were ever dropped. Way more in those two times. And I remember my father said, little boy, he said, son, every time you hear about it, he says, you know, son, we didn't have to do that. We didn't have to do that. They were already devastated. Now, you know, I understand some relatives had uh, their fathers who told me when I put this up on the internet, on my Facebook, had their fathers in, in the Philippines and they were still fighting there. But really, there was, they had already devastated, completely devastated Japan, completely devastated. So 129 to 225,000 people killed in Hiroshima and Nagasaki were really small compared to what had already been done and the devastation across Japan. And, you know, I want to say that, that, you know, to Tanaka, to Shiko, and to all our relatives, on behalf of my father, I want to give my heartfelt apologies, heartfelt apologies for what's been done, heartfelt apologies to each and every one of you. And I want to say this too, to my sister Fumi, I know what it's like to have I have both Dakota and Chickasaw background, but I also have French, Irish, and English background as well. So I know what it's like to stand in the middle of this conflict. I know what it's like. And Midaki Epi, what really touches me, and what all of us have to look at, is the fact that out of all this that happened, these relatives of our human family, they, stood up for peace 
They carried peace on earth, made peace prevail, despite what happens. And I'll tell you, I'll tell you this too, what they did here, the same kind of consciousness did right here, right here where I stand on Turtle Island was no different. And what mainly makes me sick and hurt is the fact that right now, let alone every other place that this has happened, 400,000 children in Yemen are on the verge, on the verge of starving to death. A policy supported by both Democrat and Republican governments where all the food has been stopped coming in to Yemen. And their little children, it was just a CNN, I watched seeing this. Can you imagine 400,000 children? Yes, we are, I believe, in a place, if we don't wake up, we're gonna see it again. Not only are we sitting on this conflict that's deepening in the Ukraine and Russia, not only there, but as well, with Iran, China over Taiwan, and of course, North Korea, which is more likely gonna have another nuclear test coming up and getting ready. So me talk, Yepi, you know, you know, my, my heartfelt feeling, number one, is we have to understand as have all the beloved relatives have said, as Jonathan said, or everybody said, we are one human family. In fact, we've always been one human family since this universe has been created, no matter what form we might have taken to this day. We've always had that dimension of ourselves that goes beyond time and space. Our soul has always been here and we've been part of it. So that's number one. We are one human family and the hurt of one is a hurt of all, including all of creation, especially our really animal relatives who hardly get mentioned, who hardly are ever mentioned, and we devastating them, killing them, raising our children. And I feel also, I want to express my heartfelt to all those veterans who are told they were going to defend our great democracy or whoever they've been and have come back devastated. Higher rates of suicide during COVID than ever before. And yet then they have to fight and fight and fight to get some kind of compensation for what they believed they were doing to protect our families. And yet when they come back here, they are treated like dirt. So I understand, I'm pretty feeling pretty strong about this. I feel my father's presence here. I remember so many times. So again, my heartfelt apologies, not only here, but I remember I had the opportunity when President Eisenhower came to dedicate the McNary Dam. My father took me there and put it on his shoulders at that time. And he warned us about the military industrial complex. Look at the trillions of dollars are being spent to destroy other human beings. So we better look inside our own souls, our own souls right here, right here, right here in this Turtle Island. We better look right inside here. At the same time, our sacred prophecies, which I believe in with all my heart and soul, have told us. And this we have to hear and understand. On one hand, we can hear the death pangs of an old dying mother. On the other hand, if we listen closely, we can hear the birth cries of the new being born everywhere, all at once. So me talk yepi, my beloved relatives of our human family. It's time for us to join together with one heart and one mind and many bodies and stand up to unify and understand the spirituality of the oneness of our human family, to end war. And I believe to begin peace on earth 
5, 20, 30. And this is not somebody else's agenda. This is the indigenous people and our prophecy agenda that this is going to happen. And that's what I want to stick around and see, see happen. So I want to do two things to conclude. I want to say a prayer for unity, a short prayer, and I want to sing a song in honor of all those children and women, men, elders who have been devastated. And we hold a big responsibility right here, right here in what we've done. Look, look around the world, Afghanistan, on and on, on and on. I'll say this prayer for unity. I really pray with all my heart and soul, how much longer do we have to suffer as a human family before we wake up? Oh my God, oh my God, unite the hearts of thy servants and reveal unto them thy great purpose. May they fall in thy commandments and abide in thy law. Help them, O oh God, in their endeavor and grant them strength to serve thee. O oh God, lead them not to themselves, but guide their steps to the land of knowledge and cheer their hearts for their love. And this song from our white buffalo calf woman, the foundation of our indigenous worldview as Dakota people, blesses and recognizes through our sacred pipe the sacredness of the mineral people, the water, the earth, all our plant relatives, including those in the ocean that are being killed, coral reefs, and all our animal relatives that are being destroyed as well as the sacredness of all our human beings, that everything in this universe, everything here is sacred, as we are, each and every one of us. which means my name is Shukmano and Chinupasapa, and I stand responsible fully as each and every one of us are before the Creator for my words and my actions. And I thank you so much, my dear sister Fumi, for what you've done. And Brother Scott, Brother John, both Johns who are here, all of you, for this is the time this is, we are the ones we've been waiting for. This is a time for us to arise as never before, as prophesied with one heart and one mind and many bodies. And as I want to change this from my dear relative, I shouldn't have to wait cold, crazy more city. He used to say, we'll be right into battle. Hokahe, it's a good day to die. I'd say that. Hokahe, it's a good day to live on behalf of our seven generations yet to come. And on behalf of those seven generations who are with us right now, closer than our closest vein, they're right here, including all those, by the way, that left us in Hiroshima, Nagasaki, and the fire bombings, and everything has happened. There's no death, just a change of worlds. So, Mikaki Abi, thank you so much. Honor and pleasure to be here, each and every one. And Phil, anything you'd like to close us out with tonight? Yes, yes. <clears throat> I think, uh, first of all, to, to really understand the depths of our soul, that each one of us is the spiritual representative of all that have gone before us, all that have gone before us. And with that comes the understanding of the prior unity, meaning that from the very beginning of time, we have been one. And we're in the process of coming back to understand that. But each of us is the representative of all that have gone before us. Therefore, 
right now, here and now. It's up to us on behalf of all those that have gone before us and this plane of existence and this plane of time and space, because we have a dimension of ourselves that goes beyond time and space, that's our soul. But between us, first means that we have to cleanse and purify our own hearts. In any kind of, whether it's, it's love that will blindly lead us away, the truth, or it's hatred. We've got to find that place within us to see the beauty of our inner being, not this earth suit. <laughs> earth suit goes pretty fast. In fact, you know, Crowfoot said it perfectly. He said, life, life's like the breath of a buffalo on a cold day, or a firefly on a warm summer night, or the shadows vanishing before the setting sun. That's love. And I think that it's, again, from that, I believe the foundation of this truly is truly understanding that we are one human family, which means to me, in the sacred teaching, it says we must not rest. We must not rest until we make everybody we know a brother, a sister, a mother, father, aunt, uncle, grandfather, grandmother, niece, nephew, son or daughter. When we make everybody we know that way. We'll know exactly how to treat them, exactly how to treat them. And I think that to also to know that, that we are already not the prophets that want to be fulfilled or being fulfilled here and now. 2022 is, is, is the pivot year. From here, we're going to see it grow and 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 grow. And, grow. and I believe it's so important as well. I anyway, would say this, that to truly realize that every member of our human family, every member is a sovereignty, ancient and perishable and everlasting, created by our great, great creator, every one of us. We got to see that. We have to know and understand as well that partisan politics is not going to get us there at all. It's not going to, you know, tearing down each other. It's not going to work. It's not going to work. It's going to be a spiritual path. And that means we've got to rid ourselves of an eye for an eye for a tooth for a tooth, which, by the way, any of these things I'm not innocent of, certainly. You know, for me, for me, somebody hurt my family in my old, in my past days, probably, you know, I'm getting rid of that part, giving the old, giving the old warrior to a wise elder. It wasn't just an eye for an eye. I'd take two eyes and two, two eyes and, and two teeth for everyone taken against me. That's how I felt about what happened here. Because there were no different. After Custer came, let's give you an example. And here we were peacefully together having a Sundance and they promised us they wouldn't come. And so obviously when you're attacking a village of women and children and so forth, disobeying the other orders to come do this, you know, and then we, you might say, gave them an arrow shirt, so to speak. I don't want to say that, to, to, I don't want to say that in a hurtful way. But, uh, you know, after that, the U.S. Congress, just like we're doing, by the way, exactly in Yemen, passed the Starve or Shrindra Act, at which time, from a 60 million buffalo that we depended on, reduced to 1,000. And we were starved to death. And that's why, right now, and I understand fully under about nuclear weapons, I mean, it's, it's just... Now that's getting our attention, but how about right now? How, and truly 400,000 children in Yemen are that close to starving. And the CNN came out with an article, I have to say, I have to appreciate it, it's happened to see it tonight. I knew this was happening, but to see these little children is happening all over mother earth. And, and yet the oil companies, petroleum companies are making record profits, record profits, but we are understanding as we go to the grocery stores and we try to fill our fuel, that the hurt of one is a hurt of all. But at the same time, the upliftment, the inspiration, the honor of one is the upliftment, inspiration, honor of all. So that's what I'd like to share and just say thank you. Thank each and every one. Thank you, Scott, so much. Thanks you for, for you know, and, and all who, 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 and Jay, Meyer, who, who, who supports 
you know, this moment of peace and who supported this, all the relatives, whoever we are, those that we in the unseen world, because they're closer in our closest vein. It's the one thing to remember that there is no death, meaning that every one of these sovereignties, ancient and perishable after the, from the beginning of time are right here, including those relatives who are beginning to join us from other places. As we know, our old people tell us, the ancient teacher, for every fixed star has its fixed planets in which there's life beyond understanding. Mm. So we're full of a universe of life. And I look forward, let's see, we're going to unify our human family in war and begin peace on earth by 2030. It's just the beginning. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, too. Thank you. Each and every one of you here. All the beautiful music. Oh. <clears throat> if I could grab this computer and just put it in my soul, I would right now. So I feel. I hope.